we get back to our on this um, our club um, and we get back to Bioconductor 2 with a special experiment that Abby is going to explain to us. And this is a package that has changed a lot in recent times. So thank you, Abby, for presenting today. Um, all right. Hey, everybody. Um, yeah, like Leo said, today I'm going to talk about spatial experiment, which is a package from Bioconductor that extends single cell experiment, which I know a lot of you guys are familiar with. So um, some of this will probably be familiar to you. Um, but this is um, the package or the, and the class that we use to store and work with all of our data that we generate using the 10x um, Visium platform, so um, spatial transcriptomic data. Uh, so spatial experiment is a data structure um, specifically designed for storing spatially resolved transcriptomic data sets. Um, and like I said, it extends single cell experiment, which conveniently allows you to um, make sure it's compatible with like other packages that are commonly used for single cell or single nucleus RNA-seq analysis. Um, okay. Um, all right, so like I said, uh, for those of you that know single cell experiment, this will be a little bit of a review for you, but this is a, a diagram of the structure of a single cell or single spatial experiment object. Um, we have, just like with single cell, you have your assays, um, which are generally uh, count, like transcript counts. And um, for us, these are from our 10X uh, Visium workflow after we do sequencing. And they will be, in this case, uh, the rows would be genes and the columns or observations would be spots, actual, actual tissues or spots on the array. Um, you have your row data, which is uh, metadata describing the features. In this case, it would be genes. Um, and then you have call data um, describing metadata uh, of the different observations, in this case, spots, uh, generally indexed by the spatial um, barcode instead of like a cell barcode, which you would have for single cell data. Um, just like before, you have reduced DIMMs. Um, and then stuff in yellow here is what makes a spatial experiment different um, from single cell experiment. Um, the, these three um, uh, ob or parts right here. So you have spatial coordinates, which is actually um, the spatial coordinates in pixels of each observation. So spot um, on the, the image. So we include a, an image of the histology and uh, there will be a pixel coordinate like X and Y of each, each spot on that image. And then spatial uh, data is metadata describing the characteristics of each of those spots. So for example, whether or not um, that spot falls under tissue, um, uh, tissue on, the, on the array or not. And then um, you have your image data, which is um, where the actual images are stored. Um, so uh, there's some, uh, I guess, discussion among the people that are creating a spatial ex uh, the spatial experiment package as to whether spatial data um, and spatial coordinates should be separate or if spatial data should be separate from call data. Um, uh, because a lot of it is, um, I guess, pretty similar. Like spatial data could very well go into um, call data because it's um, describing uh, metadata about the different spots on the array. Okay. So I'll just show you briefly um, what's in spatial data and spatial coordinates. Uh, spatial data, like I said, is this metadata um and about the different spots and we have things like um not the pixel coordinates but basically if we numbered the spots on the array which which number like in rows and columns each spot would be and then if that um that spot falls under tissue so in the 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 rows are indicated by the uh barcode the spot barcodes so you can see in this image uh 
the spots that are orange are considered not under the tissue and the spots that are white or gray are under the tissue. And that comes from the spatial data data frame. Um, and then the spatial coordinates is actually the pixel location on the image of each of the, the spots. And then this is um, your image data. Uh, this is the image, this is actually a data frame too, um, where each row is an image and the image ID is gonna allow you to have multiple images per sample. So for, for us, we're storing, looks like uh, four images per sample, a low res, high res, detected and aligned. Um, that image ID, yeah. So the combination of the image ID and the sample ID would be unique. Um, the scale factor is an adjustment factor that adjusts the pixel positions of the original full resolution image to the pixel positions of like whichever image it is. So it's basically an adjustment factor. Um, and the images themselves are actually stored here in this data column as a list of spatial images, which is a class I'll talk about um, next. So um, the image can be stored in any of these um, types of subclasses. Um, for us, you can see in the top right corner that we, we store ours as loaded spatial images which means it's um, an image that's fully realized into the memory as a raster object. Um, and, but you can also store it as like, uh, like a remote image or a stored spatial image, which is an image that um, is like local on your computer um, and can be loaded, in, like you just load it when you need it. Um, yeah, so. And, um, you know, spatial experiment has pretty um, easy functions for adding and removing images. Um, you can just, yeah, you can see here the add, the add image function um, and the remove image function. So I'm showing this basically because this is like new concepts that are not in single cell experiment because you don't have to add images obviously for a single cell experiment. Um, but other than that, like the, spa the spatial experiment works pretty much like a single cell experiment and you, um, the subset is like automatically synchronized across all attributes. So you only have to subset by like sample ID. Um, you can combine um, uh, multiple samples into one SPE just using C bind, um, but you have to make sure that you have unique sample IDs. Um, so I'll walk you through a little bit of like how we construct our spatial experiment object. Um, the first thing we do is we make a, a data frame of like sample information. And that includes um, a path to where the outputs from Space Ranger are stored. Um, so I showed you a, like a chunk of the, the sample info data, data frame that we make. We give each one a sample ID. Um, there's other information in there like subject, um, age of the donor region of where the sample came from, but then most importantly, this like sample path, which um, corresponds to where on the cluster our outputs are from running Space Ranger. Um, spatial experiment has a function called read 10 X Visium, which is specifically for creating um, the spatial experiment object from Space Ranger outputs. The first argument is specifying the path to um, those outputs. The second is um, uh, specifying the sample ID, which needs to be unique for each directory that you're giving it. Um, type is a, a specification for the format of the read count data. Um, data tells you whether to um, include Raw, so the raw data would include all data, even spots that are not under tissue, or you could choose to have it only include data from spots that were under tissue. We use raw because then we like later filter out um, the spots that are not under tissue. Uh, uh, you specify which image you want it to include, low resolution or high resolution. Um, and then whether or not you want to load the image into the actual object. 
And over here on the right, you see these are the actual files um, that are outputted by Space Ranger that we use that this, this function will pull to, to create the uh, SPE object. Um, so this is what a spatial experiment um, object looks like after you um, after you create it. And here we've added extra things after just using the read 10 XSEM function. Um, but you can see it looks pretty much like a single cell experiment. And then you have your um, your spatial data at the end, like your spatial coordinates data and the image data. Um, we do things like add, um, add a lot of gene information, um, which the read 10 x Visium function doesn't. So you can see in row ranges, we've added locations of the genes um, and then in row data characteristics of the genes. Uh, you can do, you know, like basic operations, just like with an SE, um, where you filter. So we'll, for example, we'll remove um, all of the, the genes whose total counts are zero. So we're removing any genes that are not, um, not detected. And like I said before, it's, it's synchronized across all attributes of the object. So when you, if you just, um, filter out certain rows of the, of the SPE, it synchronizes across all your different data frames. Um, here's an example of the call data and what we will store in there, um, information about the spots and the, all the clustering information, the, the quality control information like from Scran. Um, and yeah, like I said, clustering base base. So um, the nice thing about an SP object is, like we said, is that you can use it with a lot of the packages you use um, on a single cell object. So for us, we still use Scran for and Skater for quality control to identify spots that um, are, you know, would need to be filtered out based on low library size, low numbers of features, high mitochondrial genes, um, yeah, yeah, et cetera. And another um, you know, convenient thing is that our spatial LIVD um, package that Leo developed um, uh, works with a spatial experiment object and has a lot of great functions for plotting, making plots um, that include the image of your tissue. Um, so here I have an example of us plotting the uh, mitochondrial expression of each of the spots overlaid on um, the actual tissue, piece of tissue. Um, yeah, so that, that's it. Um, does anyone have any questions? About Oh, is there a question? Uh, sorry, there was a question in the chat. Sorry. Uh, which package is the counts function from? I think last to last slide. Um, sorry. So you were just removing the, the like, yeah, right here. Oh, um. I, it's from the spatial experiment package. Okay, thank, thank you. Yeah. Mm. Any, anything else? <clears throat> so here, like, like the counts function, mm -hmm. um, this is a nice thing that spatial experiment expands or um, extends in an um, object-oriented programming um, uh, point of view. It uh, expands the um, single cell experiment class, which itself expands the summarized experiment class. And so the counts function doesn't necessarily have to be defined 
for a spatial experiment. Um, um, but like, um, maybe, maybe it's the same Kant's function that works for earlier uh, classes. Um, yeah. Uh, sometimes, for example, cold data for a spatial experiment is the same function that was defined before, but like with a new method. So the, the new method in, in a spatial experiment is the one that like tells the cold data function how to deal with like um, um, spatial experiment objects, where to extract exactly the data from. So um, yeah, it's, it's a nice thing that this package expands already uh, commonly used infrastructure packages. And this is great, thanks. Uh, nice, interesting. I think I'm having a little bit of a visualization issue. How does the spatial data for like stay with the cell count data? Is it like, how does that map? Yeah. Um... That, like, Sorry, go ahead. And a second question, does it matter if you're using the low res or the high res image when you're doing analysis or is that for visualization? The image is only in, in the spatial experiment object, the image is only for visualization. So if you're doing like image analysis, which some people, we do do that, um, they're uh, doing that uh, like uh, in MATLAB with the high resolution image, but that's not stored in the in the SPE object. The image here is pretty much only just so you can make you know visual visualizations of the data. Does that answer your question? It the, yeah answers the okay. yeah okay and then so, the, spa the sp oh the spatial data yeah. how how it's mapped to um the counts so each each spot is going to have that have a barcode right um like each cell would have a barcode in single cell data and then that would be so that's your columns are you guys see, are you guys seeing this right here the okay so that's your columns and then your spatial data would use those barcodes as the indices um so in, in theory or in practice, I suppose you're doing 3D analysis when you, when you add the spatial with the counts? Is that, that's, I guess that's how we get the spatial bit or? Not, no, I wouldn't say it's 3D. The spatial data, honestly, is, it's the same thing as call data. Like you could you could put all of this information into call data and your object uh -huh. would work just fine. They just separated it out because I think they're trying to like highlight the differences between this like spatial experiment um, object and, and the single cell experiment object. Okay, so it's like a different kind of clustering you can theoretically do? or because it's it's, it's just like different metadata for each each spot or each barcode so um so like in a single cell experiment like the observations would be cells in this mm -hmm. case the observations are those actual spots on an array and those spots have spatial information about them like for example um was that spot under tissue or was it not under tissue or was that spot um like which spot is it like if we were going to like count these spots and give them an extra x and y coordinate like what are the x and y coordinates of that spot um sorry and then uh so I, here's like if you have multiple slices because mm -hmm. it's busy, how do you then relate those slices the spot because i assume it's the same block and you're doing a bunch of slices, how can you then relate the slices in a, or is mm, that like outside? That's a good question. Um, Cause it's like, do you then have three or four assays with a bunch of different metadata or do you have to have different spatial experiments for each slice? No, you don't have different spatial experiments. We put them all together um, and each, 
basically you each uh, slice would have a unique sample ID, which actually is part of call data. Um, but they would all go in the same, the same like ask. You'd have one assays table, um, but you would have different bar. Every every spot across all of the tissue would have different barcodes. And um, but yeah, they would potentially overlap in like array row or array column. So there isn't like unique. I guess there really isn't like unique spatial information across all of your samples. It's not, it doesn't like, uh, the, it doesn't represent like the spatial, spatialness as like all of your slices are one image. Do you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, I think so. Cause I just, did, I, I've not actually done any spatial experiments but it's, it's yeah. important mm -hmm. for technology. I just assume there's one image per slice. Are there, there's multiple images per slice? There's one image per slice. Okay. So. so I feel like I'm still not answering your question. <laughs> and you have multiple slices and it can all go in the same spatial experiment. And so mm -hmm. you have an image annotation and then you have the dot annotation, the spatials. Okay. Um, yeah. And that's all in one assay. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Okay. So then the, the trick then becomes coding so that you can then relate the spot in its position, both X, Y, and Z, so that so you have a so there must be data telling you what the stack the image is in as well. So there's image stack data. Um, that, that, that's not part of the default of Visium, right? You would have to design the experiment that way, like get okay. two spatially adjacent slices, and then once you have the two images, like match them such that the like your x and y coordinates are in the same um alignment right um and so that's <clears throat> yeah that, that would be like if you design the study that way but like most people don't do it that way right uh okay most people just get like a single a single tissue slice do the spatial experiment on it and that has to do with like how much generating the data cost right? okay so right. most people are just doing the one slice because it's still very informative. They're not doing mm -hmm. like a bunch of slices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We we did we did um, spatially adjacent replicates in our pilot study, um, but that was because we didn't know um, much about the technology and like wanted to see like how consistent it was across slices. Mm -hmm. But like that's um. Uh, that is very rare because it's just, it's a lot of money. Yeah, that means you have to be very careful about which slice you take for this, for, for whatever your question is. It just means design before you go in is very important for this. That's what mm -hmm. For whatever reason, I was thinking confocal where you're taking a bunch of slacks and then you can then like trace a neuron, but that's probably, that's not what you're really doing here. No. Well, you have all complete freedom on what type of image you make, right? So I guess if you do use a confocal scope, you could you could generate a, a Z stack image on your single tissue slice, right? Um, um, like for the spatial experiment object, you would just give it a single image. Um, mm -hmm. um, so a single of those Z stack images, right? Um, uh, by default, but like how Abby showed, you could like use the image data function to, sorry, the add image function to add more images. So you could add mm -hmm. like all the, if you have 10 stacks, you could add all 10 of them. Yeah, like here you would have like for one sample, you're saying you could have like stack one, stack two, stack three, stack four, stack five, if you're doing yeah. multiple slices. Or, or if, you're, if you're using a confocal scope that generates the Z stack. Mm 
I, I I remember some criticism that the Visium is still not quite small enough for like like getting into the that the spots are a little bit big or something for yeah, like yeah. finer details. Is that true or is that well generally they're bigger than like a single cell so you have like multiple cells in a spot which is you know not as high resolution as like single cell data um but i guess <clears throat> i don't know if they're working on making a spot smaller but people are also working on like deconvolution um to find i think different cells in each in a spot I don't know if anybody else had questions. I was just thinking of what, like, if I was going to do, it's, it's a very new technology and people want to use it more since, I mean, you can get cells, they're, they're built to be working in a very specific place. So that's important to know where they're at and stuff. Mm -hmm. But just thinking of what, what can be done with it. Uh, so thank you. Great, great talk. Thank you for this. Yeah, so like, Tenex Genomics Lab, um, uh, another company that developed the previous version of Babesium. And before, I think it was like 200 micrometers in diameter. Yeah, I think it's bigger. Yeah. 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 And now I think it's 55 micrometers in diameter. I don't know. We can double 50. check the numbers. I but think they're 50. Yeah. 50. All right. I think. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And like 10x is, I think they announced, I don't I forget if they have already released the uh, Visium HD, that's how they call it, which instead of 4,096 spots, it's gonna have like a lot more. But that means that the sequencing is gonna also be, cost you a lot more. Are those spots actually smaller? Or it's just the array is bigger and has more spots. It just has more spots, that's my understanding. I don't, I don't remember if it's actually physically bigger, like, because the current busy arrays are six by six millimeters. Yeah. I thought that they, I was under the impression that they were trying to make a bigger array so you could put a bigger piece of tissue on it, but I didn't know that they were going to try to like make the spots even smaller. Yeah, I don't know if they're making the spots smaller. I just know that they made this array with like more spots. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, well, all right. Well, thank you very much, Abby. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank you. See you around. Have a good weekend. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.